Hey guys, that's right, today's video is all about old Honeywell smoke detectors. Um, now for those of you who don't know, these old Honeywells in this style are one of my all-time favorite smoke detectors because, uh, well, I grew up with one of these uh, in my old house and I used to be terrified of it. Uh, but over the years I came to uh, realize just how cool these are and these have since become one of my favorite and all-time sought-after smoke detector models. Um, now, the two on the bottom you've seen, but well, two on the bottom you kind of have seen before. I mean, this one you've definitely seen before. That one, not, maybe not. Uh, but the two on the top are what this video is all about. Um, so this one here is the one, the very first smoke detector I ever collected. This is the one that came out of my old house. Uh, used to be up at the, the hallway, up at the top of the stairs on the ceiling above the staircase. And this is the detector that I think um, sparked my interest in vintage smoke alarms. Um, so yeah, um, this is a TC-89B, another one that I have. I'd mentioned that I have uh, two of these now, and I had three of them, but I have... Uh, I only have two of them now. This is uh, one of my contractor, or sorry, retail models. Um, these two up here are new. You have not seen these before. I just got these today. Um, and uh, just a quick glance, you may say they look very similar to this one here. Um, but these are actually two very different models. Um, and I will get into that in a minute. The first thing you'll notice is the uh, this one, my childhood one here, is the basic, is the standard model, sort of. This is what most of them are, um, and I will actually, this is, well, I mean, there's some differences between this one and the more generic models, but uh, I'll get into that in a minute, but uh, yeah, and then this is, of course, the battery-powered version. These two are also model TC-49A, um, however, they're different models. Um, and so I guess I'll go ahead and just show you the units. Now I got these, these were two, these two were on eBay, um, and they're both TC-49-8-1005 uh, models, which is one of the uh, versions that I don't have, or that I didn't have yet. Um, I don't have a one, uh, TC-49A1054 model yet, either. Um, I used to have one, but I gave that one away. Um, but, uh, yeah, the TC-49A1005. For those of you who don't know, T Honeywell uh, had, like, these catalog numbers, kind of, for all their models. So this one was TC-49... These were all TC-49A units, but uh, they had, like, the catalog numbers were, like... This one is TC-49A1195, which was the line cord model, as you can see. And then the TC-49A1054 was the version that had interconnect and a wiring harness. And the 1005 was uh, sort of the hardwired model, like the direct wire model of the 1195. It just had two wires coming out of it, pigtail wires, um, and no interconnect or ground. Uh, well, the, um, the mounting plate was the ground. And, um, but yeah, these two are ones that I've actually been searching for. Now the first thing you'll notice is the base uh, of the regular model is very different. Uh, it's black, and these two it's white, and that's actually very similar to uh, the TC-89B, the battery model, which had a white base as well. Um, and these do take have mounting brackets. However, you'll see this one here. This one's different. This one's got mounting tabs on the base, just like the TC-89B had which is very different. I've never seen that before, and I'm not sure why they put it on this one, since I guess what they thought you could do is maybe just like have it wires go up into the box and then just screw the detector directly to the drywall. I don't know. But like, why do that when you have the mounting bracket? I, I don't know why they... I guess they were just... I think what they did is they were just reusing parts from the TC-89B production, or maybe it was some kind of factory mix-up. I don't know. But I'm going to keep this one over on this side, actually, because this is technically number one, or the first one that I had posted about. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up these two units. The, these ones' covers are also different. I'll get into that in a minute, but uh, these have different covers than the regular model. Turn this one over as well. 
and I'm not going to be powering these up in this video. I'm going to make a separate video testing both of these. Um, so I'll try not to get too ahead of myself because I'm just so excited for these detectors. Um, but anyway, the first one on the left here is probably the most unusual one. Um, if I open up the regular model, my childhood version, um, you can see it looks kind of similar to uh, that one. Um, but I think one thing you'll notice is that the sensor is different. This one's sensor is smaller. It's got bigger holes than that one. That one's sensor is bigger. And this sensor is actually the same sensor that they used in the battery-powered models, the TC-89B, which you can see. This one, of course, has a metal plate screwed to the top of it to compensate for the plate that's on the cover, which they couldn't do because of the test button on this one. But, uh, yeah, so this has the TC-89B sensor, and you can even see that it has the hole for the test button right there. Uh, these do not have test buttons, as we all know. These uh, use smoke to test them. Uh, but it has the hole for the test button right there, so I guess you could... Does this one sensor? Yeah, this one sensor does unplug from here. Uh, if you un take these two screws out, you can actually like unplug the sensor. There's three little contact tabs in there. So I'm wondering if I could like take this sensor out and put this one in, and then I'd have a test button. That would be pretty interesting. Of course, I don't know how I'd push it, and you can't put this cover on it because it doesn't have the cover interlock. But anyway, you'll also notice that this one's uh, circuitry cover there is different. This one has a metal circuitry cover which is, uh, I, I don't think I've seen that before, I, I don't know, um, but it's, it's a metal aluminum uh, cover as opposed to the regular cardboard that these normally had, and even the 89B has. Um, so that leads me to believe that this one is probably a slightly earlier model. This one is dated 1977 on the side there, as you can see, 7725. Um, the uh, transformer in this one is different. It's plastic, or it's not not plastic, but it's got a plastic housing over it, which is interesting. As you can see, normally this is what we're used to seeing. It's just a regular bare-bodied transformer there with the UL label on it. This one's got a plastic housing with the UL label on it. And no labels are molded into the plastic. Uh, so that's just pretty weird. The horn in this one is an Edwards horn, which is just like the one that's in my childhood one also has an Edwards horn. However, this one's label is different. This one is labeled TC49A ionization or TC49 ionization detector model 2. So this one is known, I guess, as TC49 model 2. But if you look on the side of the circuitry cover here where the other label is the model information and the voltage and everything, it says TC49A1005. So I'm guessing that this is essentially just an earlier version of the TC-49A, uh, which is weird because why would it say TC-49A-1005 on there and just TC-49 on there? I really don't know, so this is probably just some earlier version. However, you know the date code on this one is 77? The date code on this one is also 77. So this one was probably made not too long after this one was. Um, of course, that's just a guess. I, I don't know if anybody that works at Honeywell or worked at Honeywell at the time these were made and is watching this video wants to correct me. Feel free to do it. I'm always open to being corrected. Um, anything else about this one? Um, this one has the cover interlock. It's the regular metal tab that pushes down onto a DABA solder. Later ones uh, of the one uh, the 1054 model had a closed bodied plastic switch and a little metal tab that uh, pushed it down. Uh, but, like, it's the same one as that one, and that one, and that one. So this one here, this one here is another one, the other one, TC-49A-1005, as you can see. This one actually is labeled TC-49A on the horn. And this one has the regular larger sensor that uh, these always had, and the regular transformer, and the cardboard circuitry cover. Um, but the weird thing about this one is it has a delta alarm horn. And I have never seen a delta alarm horn in one of these. I can say that I've never seen a delta alarm horn in one of these. Um, I have seen Edwards horns in these, obviously, as you can see. I've seen that weird Kobishi delta alarm hybrid, um, that, t that uh, 1054 model that I used to have. 
uh, had that kind of horn. The uh, the Cassette Masters has that horn, the weird hybrid one. Uh, but this one has a delta alarm, and I've never seen a delta alarm horn being used in these. And up until now, I thought that they didn't use delta alarm at all. But uh, I guess I was wrong. Um, and there you can see the delta alarm label kind of peeking out behind the sticker. So yeah, that's just weird. Uh, um, trying to think if there's anything else. Oh yeah, the uh, sensitivity adjustment. Well, these both have the sensitivity adjustments that these always had as well. It's just a knob that you turn. Um, and then mine has that as well, but the knob on mine is broken. Um, the sensitivity adjustment on the old one uh, actually has 0.5% uh, to 2.3% uh, stamped into the metal on there. Kind of like on the 89B where they had a switch that said 0 0.7 to 2.8%, like that. This one doesn't have that. This one is identical to mine, or to my childhood one. Uh, but, yeah. It's kind of hard to turn. Um, this one's easier to turn. You can't turn it very far, actually. Yeah. The knob wasn't a very good design. The switch is a much better design, in my opinion, on the 89B. But anyway... Yeah, so uh, let's take a look at the covers. So here are the covers. It's the regular design that uh, Honeywell used for these with the, the sort of tapered design with the uh, four large side vents, three rows of round holes that uh, encircle a center badge that says Honeywell to silence remove cover. And of course, we all know that on the TC-89B, the battery model, that center part was a test button. But on these, that was just a label, and you can only use smoke to test these. The interesting thing about these covers is that they have the little tab on the side where the LED is. That's something I've seen on these before, but very rarely. I've mostly seen this, where there's just no tab and it's just a little divot there for the LED. Um, uh, but however, I've never seen a Honeywell TC-89B that doesn't have that tab there. Um, so I just thought that was interesting. This one also has it as well. Um, the inside of the cover, as you can see, it has that plate, and there's the tab that pushes down on the cover interlock switch. However, on mine, there's another little tab right there uh, that it goes on the other side of the transformer. I just thought it was to keep the cord, the line cord, down. But these, both of them, only have the one tab to push the uh, cover interlock. They don't have that other tab that goes on the other side of the transformer. I thought that was interesting as well. Um... So, the labels, this one's label's been all kind of torn up and scratched up and you can barely read it. You actually can't even read it anymore. But this one's label is still intact and it's identical to the one in mine. I actually didn't even see if the revision label, it's 97-155, 97-1554 I think. Yep, 97-1554, although the font is a little bit bigger on mine. As you can see there. And it was manual number 60-0411. This one is also number 60-0411, as you can see right there. So these were made around the same time. This one actually is a year older. This one was made in 1976. Um, so I just realized that kind of screws up my timeline because now I don't know when this one was made and why it has that sensor, so... Uh, who knows what they did, really. It's all just a mess. Um, so yeah. Go ahead and put the covers back on. These ones' covers are harder to get on for some reason. Which it shouldn't be because they only have one tab to worry about. So, um... Yeah, this is just a quick overview, well not so quick, but just an overview video of these two unique detector models. Uh, very happy to have these. Um, I've been after some of the more obscure models of Honeywell TC-49As recently, and all I think I need now is the Black Base 1005, the 1054, and the one that had the square cover. Like, there is a version that had this exact same base, but it had a square cover with square holes and it looks kind of like a doorbell chime, actually. So I'm still after that one, but I'm very glad to have these. So testing will hopefully come soon. And thank you for watching, and more to come.